This, yeah, we're missing one yep. on Outlast. Thank you very much, gents. Uh, but looking probably closer at this matchup in particular, there you go, you can just see it over <laughs> the shoulder, uh, and, and kind of talking about the repercussions for a team like Supernova, right? We don't worry about last week's game because it was close, it was competitive, they got a point from it. But tonight, for me, is a quite a big test. Now, they've lost, you know, arguably... Uh, one of their bigger players in Saved, or at least names, mm -hmm. right? And we've seen Palarazzi, who has never seen Tier 1 play, at least from my memory, mm -hmm. jump into the roster. Now, I've been told, you know, part of the rank stack, all of that fun stuff, but when it starts to translate into these kind of matches, how important is it for, like, at, from a player's perspective, how important are these matches? Yeah, really important. I mean, this is where you sort of gain that confidence before you start to play against teams like GG, teams like Chiefs. You really want to come into those games already feeling like as a roster you have the ability to beat teams. Because yep. if you go into those games where you're sort of playing the mid to lower tier teams and you're, and you're already losing, you know, winnable rounds, if you're losing games even, uh, it can really take a shot to the confidence. So having that confidence coming into big games is such an important thing. And uh, yeah, I mean... Like you said, for Supernova, this is a really important match for them. Yeah, well, you heard it here, folks. Uh, the uh, ex Kelton's Knights player um, that went 1-6 and six last stage drop and how important it is to win games. Let's go across to the beautiful casters. Can I just say what a wonderful job that Vince here has been doing so far on the couch. He has slotted in seamlessly alongside Rob and Marsh Marder. I think he's doing an incredible job and clearly carrying the work. Marsh Marder's barely said a word, got on camera for two seconds. And by the way, I don't know if you could tell, but the mic box was actually off. So stitched up completely there, Marsh Marder. Wasn't yeah. actually talking. Someone was talking for him. Yeah. I think it might have been Rob. Maybe. No, Vinny has been doing a good job. Yeah. Hasn't lost his cool this stage yet, like some others. I don't know who you're talking about. Well, I'm looking straight at him. Are you? Yeah. Where's Marshmata? He has been absolutely miserable on the couch all afternoon. No, not him. Ah. Why, why is he upset then? Because he has to work with Rob. How'd you go during the break? Did you have a, have a glass of water, calm down a, a little bit? No, I'm fine. I'm totally fine. You good? I'm absolutely good. Okay. Well, hopefully we don't have any DCs this game, otherwise... DC. Ang Angry Jakey might come back out. <laughs> no, look, honestly, I don't want to harp on it. I don't want to talk about it, but I do want to apologize uh, for absolutely nothing. <laughs> Let's move on. Final game of the day here for Oceania League. So that looks fun fact as well coming your way, guys. Last four games. 7-1, 7-0, 7-0, 7-1. Do we get something a little bit different here? And I am actually talking about the very last game of Play Day 1 as well, by the way. So the last four coming into this one, yeah, they have been incredibly one-sided. I will say, when we kind of did our predictions coming into the studio today, I made the point, Outlast Supernova, that could be a spicy one. No, I, uh, well. No? no. <laughs> that was like an Australian is. I was going to say, like, no, yeah, I, I agree. Nah, yeah. Nah, yeah. I do agree. Um, like, think... Vinny, with his Italian coming out, you with your Australianisms yeah. coming out. I agree. I think this match has potential to be quite close. I'm very intrigued to see uh, President. Oh, they've got like a little Back hat. on the roster. Little hat glasses game going on. Yeah, Bappen and President. Playing dress up. It's good that they let they let him back into the roster after Pinku absolutely went supernova last week. Mm. Looks like we might have some banter in the chat for this match as well. Always, I hope so. Always exciting. Double shields off the board. And so other key attacking tools will remain up like the Tokabi. Grim here also probably going to be impactful. Defensively, it's the Azami off the board from Outlast Supernova. We'll see what they I like to follow that up with. Is it going to you know follow the meta or perhaps be a little bit more of a targeted selection in terms of this ban? Well, I'd say it's probably a little bit more targeted. Clash off the board, and that won't play into this particular match. Um, yeah, I can only assume that that's a direct counter pick on to Outlast. So obviously, uh, the lads on the couch were actually talking about the fact that we will run it back on Colin so that last week it was Supernova that pushed Game of Gladiators, and it's not even like pushed. They got out to a 5-1 lead, guns on this very map. And there, look, <laughs> there was some uh, some banter being definitely thrown around when it came to that, but GG pulled it out and eventually did win the game, but credit to Supernova. They looked incredibly impressive on this match. But then also, for Outlast, they actually beat Antic, an Antic roster that demolished Circular Spheres tonight. That was on a different map, of course, Skyscraper, but... Even though Supernova come into this game 0-1, they do have at least one point from that OT loss. They also showed quite a lot of promise last week in their game against Game of Gladiators, and of course Outlast beating Antic. This 
could be a big result for either of these two teams to kickstart the stage. And kind of even just looking ahead to tomorrow, by the way, we do return tomorrow. For these and two the day teams. after. And the day after. Uh, Outlast will get to play Odium, so they kind of get a decent game there. And then Supernova versus Circular Sphere. So you win this game, and suddenly then tomorrow looks pretty good as well. Oh yeah, there's every chance that Outlast could, uh, look at this roster, a lot of new, newer names, but they could certainly have a good stage ahead of them. Have a Supernova, no Pinku, no Cat Enjoyer. I see a default camera that is still up. It's also flashing, like someone's watching. Bailey just saw it on drone, and it is still up. And Bailey's dead. Okay. But they get the trade, maybe all part of the plan. Still up, by the way. I think. Maybe just lulling them into a self-sense of security. Reloading. A self-sense of security? Yeah. False sense of security? Oh, something like that. <laughs> I was going to say, it's been a long... It's still up! Guys, come on, please. That's all right, leave it up. <laughs> Not going to make a difference. Come on now, guys. Move on. Don't get upset. <laughs> it's funny, the two things we get upset at are very different. <laughs> You just get triggered by the in-game stuff, and I get triggered by the out-of-game stuff. Uh, under two minutes to go, 4v4. Outside of the um, shenanigans regarding the default camera outside and you know, Dirty and, and Bailey playing off of it, we haven't really seen much inside of the building. President just holding towards me. He does still have all three gas babes available. Yeah, Mute Jammer coming his way as well, courtesy of Quixie over towards Bot Spiral. Bappen might actually make contact here as we see the Rotero will blow up this deployable shield and contact found Ned with a little swing across the doorway gets the headshot and that will deal with Batman good start here from Outlast on the attack I think President's been able to sit in this position without being spotted yeah you can see from this point point of view for Yentai watching the right side as there was uh, Nitro Cell thrown from that direction drone's yep. not going to catch him either and that drone uh, that mute gemmer was juggled to deny drones from this position. So this could be a potentially big play available to, to Prez. His first game of the stage. SMG 11 though from this distance. It'll be a Rotero that actually hops down the hallway as Yentire slowly makes his way in. Quicks, he might peek this though. Indeed he will. Spots him close left and might make the call to President to play off that intel and he does do so nicely. Good teamwork from Supernova. Yeah, good little back bait and switch there from the defense. 30 seconds then on the clock. Ned still down below on the Deimos. Playmaking potential now. A little bit hampered for the attack. One close right for Relays. Had a great game last week. He throws out the EMP as a potential distraction. Doesn't do a whole lot and loses his life to the hands of Palarazzi. So from the 3 3 to a 2 2, now to a 2 1. The footholds are strong though. Ned plays it well, but swinging. Oh, oh they actually traded, but Supernova will get the round win. Question mark from Batman, probably just saying what's happened at the end of that round. SN will get the opening round though. Ned Bait. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, Ned was in a bit of an interesting uh, position there on the Deimos. We saw that initial jump in down below over towards Visa. Won a fight there that. I'm sure Bapun would have been a little bit frustrated at. Um, yeah, looking back at the round, the default's still up. We don't saw that one don't watch, trade. guys. Close oh. your eyes. Yeah, this is... Ugh. This is a bit better. That was a nice shot, Clean shot from Ned. Um, then lurk his way up for the late one-for-one one trade in the one versus one. So the attack... Or well, pardon me, the defense, rather, wins that out with the bombs not to counter defused. Jeez. So, clean I tell you what, I mean, I know obviously Ned dies there, but he still gets that kill after... When you, you're thinking about there's a player prone footholds, bottom left, then you have to like swing all the way to the doorway. It's not easy to hit that headshot, and he does do it. Easy for him. Easy for him. Easy for some. Certainly not for me. Did as well as he possibly could in that round, but in the end, Supernova do get the round win. I think, honestly, the big difference in that round was probably the play between Quixie and President on the mute and the smoke over towards meeting. That little combination proved to be a difference maker. Certainly a bit of pressure for President probably coming into this game after his little holiday. Unlike some, he's kept his place in the team after going on a holiday. Even though the guy that replaced him dropped like, what was it, like 12, 14 kills or something ridiculous. Pinky went, nu uh, went nuts last week against Gaming Gladiators. Mm. But they have enough firepower in this roster that adding in a player like President who gives them a bit more on-site defense, a bit more of an anchor. 
I think probably in the long run is something that will flow better on the roster. Baffin with Voss G on the vigil, roaming around quickly on the cap can as they might just go for a glass play here through Garage. And that's going to be an easy blitz into the corner. Sit down on the butt side as Bailey makes a swift entry. Dirty has no real counter to that on the Wamai. Still pressure from above and President could Nitrocell on to ACOG. As the smokes go up though, that's certainly where the glass can be, well, impactful, but he's going for the plan. So Ned is actually now dead. I don't know if that's who you really want planning there. Play off the smokes, get the gun up. And speaking of gun up, President has done well in this round on the mirror. Suddenly relays the only one left and this rush attack from Outlast has not worked out at all. Yeah, lack like of pressure up above here from the attack, allowing that plant to be denied oh. from above. Relays, three? 7, HP. 7 HP and down to President in a 1v1. 90 seconds, lots of time to formulate a plan of attack now for Outlast through relays. Has a drone. Has two, in fact. I mean, Prez still has the mirror window to play off. Full information on the default, although oh, default that will hacked. Be hacked. Yeah, okay. Well, he's got more than just the two regular drones. He's also got the clutch drones as well. Do mine. Need to get that out pretty quickly on 7 HP. The guy's above. I mean, again, this is the, the beauty of having so much time. He's got over a minute here to try and maybe find a way to deal with this mirror window. He could even try and find a way to maybe go from behind and also, more importantly, keep President guessing as to where he's going to enter from. But the big thing is the kit itself is over towards plant position. Drone, intel, confirms Ooh. where he is. Shoots from above. I think the primary goal here is definitely to try and deal with this mirror window. Yeah, and done so. So Huli chipping away at this defensive hold, but President has now been given an opportunity to reposition, but will he expect the breach? I would just push yellow here. <laughs> so I would do the most random thing ever and probably just try and get into a, a position he wouldn't expect me. Cloud's trying to come through. Does he get any intel? He can set this up as well. Okay, bulletproof camera, more information. Don't forget, I don't know if the default got shot out here from President. It did get hacked. Gets himself in a great position. Good reposition from Prez, right? You're stagnant there. You hold behind your... Your mirror window that's been popped, or you stay stay around that sort of kitchen area, you're probably not going to be in the uh, best position. And yeah, <laughs> not ranked, buddy. Hey, hey, honestly, that's good trash talk. I like that. That's fine. Doesn't upset me. You are a liability to work with. I think to the credit of Relays, he actually did a decent job of sort of chipping away with what he had there, um, trying to break down that final layer of defense. Oh, um, beginning of the round, very chaotic. We saw the rush through main breach, the smoke canisters, or the smoke grenades rather, from the attack to try and facilitate that. Um, the fuse was a rather effective. Um, again, we do have the Monty and the Blitz banned out. Um, I know you said it was the Blitz push forward, um, but more so Blitz in terms of pacing, not the operator. Oh, yeah, true. Um, I just honestly didn't even... It was that quick, I didn't even look the fact that we got the Blitz panned out. But it, it's the same attack. It still works. <laughs> From the PMV I was watching, I was like, oh, it's like it's Blitz. But yeah. It, it like, was as effective was as the Blitz would have been in yeah. that situation. Um, but then going for the plant in a rather default position, top, uh, pardon me, first floor, wasn't accounted for there by Outlast. So, so you wanted more pressure in towards Piano. No, either, go deep and flood and go for picks and go for like an off-meta plant position if you're in a spot for plant. Um, or attack above. You had to do one or the other there. They got caught in the middle, and then Supernova denied it well. So 2 nothing start for Supernova. Outlast have uh, yeah, not really been too awful, though, to be 0-2 down. Certainly trying to make things happen, but Supernova looked pretty good on this map. President has also slotted in nicely after his holiday. He's played really well in the opening two rounds. And again, having someone like President who can play that sort of anchor role, when we think historically in Oceania, the likes of like Juicy or Digital, and there's plenty more to name, Fisher guy as well. President's kind of like that position, not certainly to the level of those guys, but same position to play on. And I think having someone like that on a roster that's got Quixie and Dirty and Bap and Palarazzi, these guys can push out, they can frag, they can roam. To know that you've got someone who's happy to just stay back, play sight, play... Maybe the boring positions. It's certainly a, a positive for Supernova as a roster. Outlast struggling to find information. So Outlast looking to chip away at above control. There are the mirror windows facing in towards these positions though. Ned still has a shock drone in pocket that he may be able to oh, utilize. Again. He's hot. For a man that's, you know, copped a lot of crap over the years. He's playing well at the moment. 
I wonder how long he's had to <laughs> you know, re-acclimatise himself for the game. Probably not that long. Not just on the hand for President. Just thinking about this one. Throws that out. Doesn't connect. They're getting stored out here, the attack. I haven't found a way to deal with this mirror window, which is causing problems. I don't think Yentai has found a way to really use these boogie auto breaches either. Taking so much time to just clear above, you don't have then the time to try and deal with the floorboards and put pressure down below. There's a player down. That's Bappen. Not really in the safest of positions to get picked back up just yet. Bailey, little shoulder peek, it doesn't work out. Maybe expecting the wide swing to follow through from Dirty, who, well, for a second thought about it, Quixie loses his life in a second to follow in quick succession. The drop shot is successful from Bailey. Now into a three versus one, and Outlast finally able to win these gunfights. It's down to President. He's already done a bit in this round. He's going to have to do it all in this round. If they're going to find a way to win it, he does get that down onto Yentire. Creates a 1v2 temporarily. Still kit not down. In fact, it's in the hands of ACOG. And over towards Spiral, navigates President. They go for the revive. Yentai is back up, down to 20 HP. Could President find a way to clutch this round as he repositions himself back up towards top floor? 20 seconds remaining. Still, the plant has not gone down. ACOG wanting to plant it in towards CO, towards default position. Hello, that's an easy one onto Yentai. Box. Oh, in towards Box. Even I, for a split second, forgot the, pl the site was down below. That was a strange round, a strange end to the round. President really just wanted to get top floor to play off the vert, but they were all still up there with 15 seconds left. Yeah, he was trying to catch them off guard, um, potentially try and, I suppose, drop that diffuser and maybe then catch any players that preemptively drop below. Um, time would have been a severe issue, but unfortunately for Prez, player inside a box still up there. Uh, with, as you mentioned, limited time remaining in the round. And so a pretty good response there in the end from the attack. Um, we saw that top floor um, hold be pretty firm for the defense for the most part. The mirror window did a decent job installing things out. But then over towards that front desk position, uh, a lot of trades going down this moment right yeah. here. 50 seconds on the clock. Good drop shot. Yeah, great drop shot. And Palarazzi was good for one, but then a snappy retrade. Left it in this one versus three. 30 seconds in on the clock, and we saw the revive, and President makes his way forward slowly, He makes the slowly, right play slowly. here. Absolutely makes the right play. Now, by the way, ACOG is the one that has the diffuser there at the end, and, and again, still over towards box, not really in a position to go for plant with 15 seconds left. So I don't know if they were anticipating President to actually make his way back uh, up top floor, but... Nah, they weren't. Uh, yeah, I actually think it was more of a hesitation in terms of their site play. Maybe Prez actually could have just been a little bit more... Well, the third player was rotating lobby, so that's why ACOG was sitting up above. Um, President didn't know that. And so probably expected I both players to be below and play for Vertonal. Yeah, I mean, I think Prez makes the right play, but he's probably a little bit surprised that there's still so many up there at that point in the round. Yeah. So technical pause, by the way. Uh, called by Bappen. <laughs> it's like, you know, you're playing on land, you get the mirror next to you, you just look over to your left, it's like your teammate, you give him a little fist bump to yourself. <laughs> Hancock. I rate it. That's a good game this though, and I think certainly around that Outlast needed needed to get one on the board here, as they've been certainly doing well inside of the rounds, but not able to just find a win. Yentai was great last week, hasn't really been able to do a whole lot in this one. Ned, great shot in the opening round, but oh, a little little wave. Hey Ned. So do they know when they're actually on camera, as in like the, the singular POV? I actually don't know. Not sure. There's Bappen, give us a flex Bappen. Oh, come on. Come on, yeah. Oh, I thought he was going to... I saw that, I saw that, like, right arm start to, yeah. to go up a bit. Thought we were going to get one. Polarazzi. Deep in thought. Played well last week. Now, I was actually um, casting the game with uh, the wonderful James last week, and he had never heard of Polarazzi, and I was convinced he played last stage. In some role, in some capacity. Potentially a sub. Yeah. Like convinced had seen this name before uh, at the at the pro league level, and he had never heard of him. Not too far to go, hopefully, until we can get back into this one. Do you reckon that's Ned's um, CPU usage on the graph? <laughs> it's a bit high, but not even in game. Um, well, what's the top one? Is the top one CPU? It is, right? I think it is. Yeah, it would be. Ah, it's about fifty percent. That's pretty high. It might be a bit old. 
He's streaming, uh, like, webcam, right? So, I don't uh, know. Like, sure. Well, and Moss. Uh, yeah. Moss does tank the, uh, the CPU a bit, I believe. So, back into the game as we fortunately don't have a full-blown rehose, but the tech issues have been sorted. 7-2 and two for President. I mean, he's done his, his job in replicating what we got from Pinky <laughs> last week. I, I he's mean, not known as the fragger. Huh? That's I was trying to frame it in a that's why I was taking a moment. I was trying to like frame it in a way that wouldn't be a, a backhand compliment. But the reality is it's pretty rare that you'll see President go positive in a match, just the nature of his role. Also quite rare that you would see him pushing towards double digits. The fact he's already on seven kills, yeah. three rounds into the piece is quite impressive. He's played well, he's had some good impact kills as well. Yep. None yet for Gentire. Definitely a player that I had my eye on last week and coming into this stage as someone who can frag out. See if he can get involved. They bring the Amaru this round though, guys, along with the Grim. The Lion certainly got some offensive prowess in the fourth round for Outlast Gaming. Certainly mindful of the fact that Supernova, of course, pushed GG to the limits last week on this map. You have to question in this map pool, was this the right choice to allow Consulate through? We'll know by the end of this one. If I'm correct, I know I've gone Outlast. I think you went Supernova in your predictions to begin the night. I cannot quite remember. It's only been like two hours. Come on. It's been a, <laughs> hasn't been a long night. That's a fair point. Uh, yeah, I went Supernova. Okay. That's a good one. I, think I believe in Prez. Yeah. I believe in the Prez effect. I'll tell you what. I just felt like the win last week for Outlast over Antic, and then I, you know, we saw the Antic result again tonight. Maybe that just makes it even better for Outlast. I really like what I see from this raw stuff. Life drone. Oh, okay. Nicely done from Quixie. Oh. Bit of BM as well. Shoot and it again. Shoot his body again. The irony nah. is, is that drone gets away because he was too busy shooting at the floor. <laughs> oh, that's worth the trade. The, 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 the BM, BM. The BM versus, <laughs> versus the drone. <laughs> worth it. Good open kill for Supernova. Well, they're going to have to hit this uh, site hard and fast now with the Amira and the Grim combination. Flash ready to go for relays and then maybe follow up. With the grappling hook, I imagine that will be a double flash, triple flash, and then in. Oh, will this work out though? There is a player close right. He hasn't cleared it out just yet. Never mind. He actually does get the kill. Nicely done from relays. Ironically, ends up dying to the razor bloom of all pieces of utility, and we will see the thorn actually have an impact. Not one that we typically see all that often. But Bappen gets a freebie now into a two versus three though in favour of Outlast, and the plants go down from Bailey. It is that fast hit. Yellow ping information. Does this get played off from Bappen? Well, he tries to, but can't quite hit the player. Nitrosol, a little bit right, awry from Quixie, loses his life to Yentai. Two in the round for him, and this should be Outlast from here. Yeah, site was completely vacated. Bappen committed to down below, unable to find a plant denial position. And Quixie's retake over towards Yellow Stairs, also unsuccessful. One versus three and gets the first. Nice, Bappen. Okay, winnable. 30 seconds. Got to go fast now. They're kind of split. You can create two 1v1s. As in so as well. I love the fact there's a blue outline and a red outline here in a 1v2, but hey, that siege at the moment. Yellow ping information. He can play off of this, but he has to find out where the second player is. That's over towards CO. One over towards outside the balcony. Breach! Oh, the drop shot doesn't work from Yentire. Does he expect? Too late. For where ACOG to be. But no time, unfortunately. Too late indeed, and Outlast win the round. But not a bad effort from Bappen, but needed to go a bit quicker. Yeah. It was always going to be tricky to do that in a timely manner. As you mentioned, though, was in position to isolate two ones and had a read on one of said players. Got on the kit though, I think about 6.5 to 6.8 on the clock, so no time even if he did stick. I like this little set play from Outlast, a player down, they decide to send it. Um, good flashes in through the con window. Equally good uh, Razor Bloom in response to counteract but, that particular play from the Because that was Palarazio to Warden with triple flashes coming in and he couldn't deal with the Amaru. You do make a very valid point. The Razor Bloom, though, doesn't miss. No. <laughs> the Razor Bloom can be flushed. It makes no difference. So 2-2. Two, two. Honestly, I think a very fair score line through the first four rounds of this game. Both teams have shown quite a bit. And I'm excited for, I think, these two rosters, while I don't look at them as, say, contenders for the major, I look at them as, as teams that can continue to improve this league and certainly be on, uh, you know, around that middle portion, top four, fight for top four. 
a, a good quality amongst both rosters. Good for Yentai on the board now. He's got two kills, but it's been relays. It's been ACOG. Ned Bailey of all actually contributed pretty nicely as a you know team effort right now from Outlast Gaming. And really taking it to Supernova on a map in which they performed very well last week against Gaming Gladiators. To basement we go for the fifth round to see who can take the lead going into the final round of the half. Final game of the day. It's a quick one here in the Oceania League. Two 7 0s, a 7 1. This one, though, proving to be. It's already match of the day. Whatever happens from here. <laughs> it's the most competitive match, objectively. <laughs> yeah. I feel like there's very much uh, potential for this match to be genuinely a, a close affair. And five go. Oh, that is. Whoa, whoa, that is the timing on that. Relays fell off the angle the moment Quixie just walks past it without watching. There's two now there as well, and Quixie's coming back for more. I don't know if that was the right play either. Like, you got away. What are you doing, Guz? What am I doing? What is he doing? Why, 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 why am I copying it? <laughs> I don't mean, what are you doing? I mean, like, what are you doing? And I'm throwing to you. <laughs> Come on, you didn't do anything. Quixie did that. What is Quixie doing there? He's had a couple of bad moments in a row now, Quixie. Even on the uh, Yellow Stairs retake last round, he got caught... Um in a weird position. Should have just taken so. that little shot to the body and just been like, oh, okay, bit of a misplay. Let's just keep on moving. And he just crawls and then comes back to the window. Yeah. On the hunt now is Relays on the Jackal. Inox scanner active. Damos as well and the Grim. Lots of information certainly can go the way of Outlast in this round. Coming up, server stairs is dirty though on the Wamai. Got Bappard still roaming around on that vigil. Boss G in hand, here's the push oh, for no. Dirty. It is successful. Yen Tiet loses his life and Relays is down as well. You won't believe, I was literally just about to say, if you have this attacking lineup and you get flanked, something has gone seriously wrong. And right on cue, they get flanked with triple info gathering on the, si on the side of this attack, which is just insane. Uh, don't forget the Grim as well. Um, yeah, certainly uh, a little bit peculiar. They've allowed that one to slide. He knows he's close right here. Palarazzi should be good for one. He should be winning that one, but he doesn't. Bailey wins it out. He almost got a second, but Bappen a little bit better. Advantage still with Supernova. Default shot out from Ned as ACOG is, ACOG is able to find the kill <laughs> on to Bappen. <laughs> the kid will get picked back up. Oh no, the ETT, it's all happening. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, Grok, guys. Yeah, they definitely cocked that one up. That's <laughs> You're not wrong. That was a big chicken. <laughs> oh, we have fun here. 20 seconds, 2v1. Well, we're back into this one again, but this time around, it's not quite bapping in the 1v2. It's down Ned in the 1v2s. He makes his way down Dungeon, 15 seconds. Still has a couple of drones, but at this point, you don't have the time. He does have the diffuser in the back of the pocket, but dirty with a lovely swing. Here he was. Supernova will take the lead. <laughs> You got a bit red there, Jake. <laughs> I guess you could say I cocked up a bit. <laughs> oh boy, tonight has been... I feel like we're back to good old O's. You know what the best thing about it is immediately as I said that he dies when he did. <laughs> I don't know what quicks he's doing there. Now honestly, Outlast then as well, you mentioned that in terms of the ability to flank, surely can't be possible. The Jackal gets out Jackal. Yentai gets caught up above thinking he can just play Boogie Auto Breaches for free and then <laughs> the EDD, you can't park there. <laughs> I didn't even see that message. I thought that was just your call there. You're not that creative though. Absolutely not. Stole that one. You do like stealing commentary lines, don't you, Jake? You have a bit of a history. Uh, it depends if you are an avid follower of other sports. <laughs> <laughs> Might clue on. Oh, boy. Maybe I might have to steal uh, actually one that you might be a bit knowledgeable about, but 2016 Grand Final, it involves a certain BT. Yeah, but it also game. involves a naughty word. <laughs> <laughs> but you've already dropped a couple of those tonight, so honestly, nothing is off the cards. So final round of the half here. Can Outlast make it 3-3? Three to three. Quixie 2-5, but he is also the kind of player that could probably go and find 2-3 kills at a round. Oh, and the mozzie roam around, be an absolute pest himself. Yeah, called it a pest because Mozzie pests. Mozzie, he's playing Mozzie. Well, he's going for a spawn pick. Yentire does it. die. I called it. Okay. Yeah, we've seen it. Mozzie creeping a little bit here in O so far. Now, this is the trash talk I like. 
Quality. Quality. That's how it's done. How many kills is Bappin on, by the way? Can we have a look? Uh, well, he has the highest score, so... Yeah, it's good, five. It's good enough. He's, he's not going negative. So that's positive. That's what I like to say. <laughs> <laughs> if you're not negative, you're positive. Player advantage for Supernova. Already up 3-2 to two as well. Looking to try and solidify this half and go up 4-2. to two. Oop. That was Bappa just spotted. Drone at the feet. Razor Bloom activated. Flash to come oh, through. Like he doesn't go behind the desk well enough and relays. And a lovely little entry. Bappa now 5 6. He indeed now is negative. Yeah, nice little pop flash to himself there. Takes that ground. Dirty now forced back as well. Interesting deployable shield position. Default. Still up. President holding, and then you got Quixie as well, service stairs. Still a lot of good map pressure here from Supernova defensively. Yeah. 90 seconds remaining. Playing down below off of this angle. Could be good for Quixie. Not a lot of pressure down below. This is not a common angle either. You come through that door, you're dead. I don't think they'll expect it. I'd be pretty surprised, but Bailey is going to drone below, actually. Oh, Should spot him. Here we go. The boost. Oh, I didn't see him. Didn't see him. Now he sees him. Okay. Now he knows what they could be looking at and what they've got in terms of control towards service. Okay. Makes his way back up. Gives up that position. Still good hallway. Oh, there's a drone. Guys, look. Down the end of the hallway. Ooh. Quixie had no idea. There's a drone just staring at him near vending. Bailey gets a free kill off the back of it. Device is set. You know who's going to step up this round or needs to step up for the defense? It's Prez. Up close, on the smoke, flushed out, but still has three canisters in hand, 45 seconds. Oh, he's going to get flushed out if he's not careful as well. Holds in towards the corner. Decent amount of time, but hold! Oh, I thought that was Prez. So did I. Razi <laughs> saves the day! Well, didn't last very long. I was going to make some kind of quip about, watch out, Mr. President, but no, the President will fall. So will his defender, and now down to Dirty, but he too will fall and follow them to the grave as Outlast will make it 3-3. Three to three. What a half we've had here on Consulate. I'm kind of glad you didn't say that joke, because probably not the time or the place. Ah, uh, well, <laughs> to be fair. This isn't an AL. This is not an AL. <laughs> I, don't, I don't really care. Well, three, three, it, does, it doesn't have the same impact if I say... Um, Watch out, Mr. Prime Minister. <laughs> it doesn't have the same impact. <laughs> three to three. It's very fair. Very fair result. Honestly, right now, if I had to ask you who wins it from here, you'd probably say no idea. Well, no, I'd say Supernova because I picked them pregame. That's true, you did. And I stand by my predictions. Okay. Defenders, protect I may have got circles here drastically wrong tonight, but outside of that. <laughs> drastically wrong. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, intriguing half a siege. Uh, pretty chaotic across the map, so we'll see how things now... Uh, work themselves out in the second half, round seven, top floor defense here for Outlast. Looking like a bit more of a traditional extension over towards the likes of the vending machine. We didn't see that necessarily be too much of a stronghold from Supernova. Instead, they were a little bit more reliant on the likes of the smoke up close. Um, and I think they were just outgunned in that previous round. We saw the LMGs really come into their own. So we'll see how this more, again, traditional lineup may work out for the defense. In establishing these crossfires and making the admin push across a bit more challenging. It looks like, just based on composition, Supernova on the attack are going to play into it, and their spawn position confirms it. Interesting, they bring the Dockerby for Bappen. We didn't really see it in the first half of the hands of Outlast. You have 45 seconds until you get your first logic bomb. Not bringing the Amari for potentially swift entry into console. Front entrance at the moment, and eventually up towards the balcony to put pressure in between sites. Well, canisters have been placed as well from the entire new gem is just going to deny temporarily, though, until the secondary impact EMP from Palarazzi will allow balcony to get opened up. Entry down below from Quixie for Supernova does give them a little bit of map control towards basement as the rest now get to work over towards the repel. Towards V's up. Yeah, time really going to be critical here for Supernova. I want to try and expedite this admin clear to give them more time for the util dump on that second layer of defense over towards vending. Looks like they have initially forced Bailey back off that, that hold. Dirty from the roof able to deal with front desk, so that opens up the option to push up a spiral staircase later on in the piece, and that could be the case for Bappen, depending on which route he wants to go for. 
So that's both logic bombs as well, so they haven't wasted one just yet. Well, that's the beauty. I think in some ways the, the new logic bomb system for Dockerby means that you don't inadvertently always use one at the beginning of the round. Forces you to be a little bit yeah. more thoughtful. New Gemma does block actually quite a lot of those phone calls for what it's worth. Only I think two were ringing. Yentai and Ned. Happen making his way up service. Has actually got some yellow pink information. Who is that up close? Is it Relays on the Warden? I think, I think it, it is. Is it Bailey? No, Bailey. Okay. So it can be flushed out. Flash will force him back. I think he should be able to get safely away from this position, and Bappen doesn't even follow up. Well, ACOG is the main man here for the defense. Deployable shield still standing with 50 seconds on the clock. Oh, incendiary comes out. Forcing the dislodgement. A couple over towards this long desk as ACOG will get the kill on to Quixie. Opens things up now for Outlast on the defense and gives them a really good standing position here. Bailey just holding still, not pushing away. Again, second logic bomb rings out. Still has a nitrosol, but he goes prone with the shotgun. And they haven't even cleared vending. For all intents and purposes for Supernova, they've been really stalled out on this attack. Good swing from Bappen. Superior gunplay, if not mine, annoying and nuisance, but dealt with. President inadvertently has left the game, but of course this one's not over yet. That one's going to be a tech pause to follow suit. Outlast win the round. And they take the lead as we get the tech pause to come through. Are you going to go, you gonna go in on him? <laughs> you reckon President actually thought they were going to win that round? Probably not. <laughs> Maybe he thought they were going to win the round so so well that they were going to win the game early. No. Yeah, look, a little bit disappointing there uh, from Supernova. Anticipated their clear of a more default setup to actually be a little bit cleaner. Um, they used the, the Incendiary to clear that position. Acorn completely vacated the shield. Mm. Wasn't caught on that rotation. Then somehow allowed back. Deployable shield was never dealt with. And so making that cross towards the objective, um, you know, in that, in the face of that sort of three-lane defense, if you want to call it that, with, with the angles that can be produced by the defense, that was always going to be a really rough challenge for them. So, bit of a setback for the attack. Equally, though, good defense. Yeah. It's a, it's a difficult one to split at the moment, I think, between these two teams, because it has had that back and forth kind of feel. Both teams have had good moments. Both teams have probably had some moments they'd like to forget as well. As we wait for the president to get back into the game and we can continue on. I wonder why he monitors his CPU usage. If he monitors it? Yeah, like why? Why has he got that up, Mookie? Oh, is that a fish tank? Looks like it. Dangerously close to the PC. You wouldn't want to have a fish tank fault mid-game. <laughs> Why would you have a fish tank fault? What, what's going to happen? Maybe it just explodes and then your yeah. PC's drenched in fish tank water. <laughs> Why would it explode? Why would your fish tank explode? <laughs> Stranger things have happened, Jake. Apparently. If I, don't, I don't to you, apparently. You've never seen a fish tank explode? I've never seen a fish tank explode. You're a lucky man. Yeah. Neither have I. Yeah, Palarasi's got the fan on. Where's he at? Darwin, mate. Darwin. He's up north. <laughs> He's up north. Bloody 30 degrees, mate. That's going to be all of us in a couple of months, though, down, down here with the that summer. Yeah. Actually, though, it's been a bit... It hasn't really been, like, dry summer recently in Australia, so... I feel like the last couple of years, it's been more of, like, a muggy, wet, humid... I'm seeing Vin over there, Wave. How about you get on, get on the mic, mate, and have a bit of a chat? Can we get that... Uh, can we get that done production? Can we get the, mic, get the mic live? Bring him in. We do have a dedicated analyst for this stage, so we may as well use him. Well, he was supposed to be doing like little halftime segments, you know, give us his thoughts on the way the game's going. And uh, hello. He's just kind of hello. Been can you guys hear me? Lately. We can. We can't hear you, Vince. How are you? Are you enjoying the game? I'm good. I'm hearing Xenox say that I need to do more than uh, what my job entails at the moment, um, and I'm not a big fan of that. So, well, don't oh. don't listen to Jake because he is probably the laziest person <laughs> on the talent team. Always late to work as well. Yeah, no, the game's uh, game's been very interesting so I'll far. I'll have you know I've never missed match one. <laughs> 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 the bare minimum. We, we almost did that one time on Latam, but... Oh, that was different. 
And you were, you were so we bring Vinny in and then we start yapping. Yeah. Vin, uh, um, uh, very quickly, Vinci, are you still with us? I am. I am. Yeah. Any here. thoughts on this game, mate? Because it's a close one. Um, yeah, exactly that. It's uh, very, uh, very even at the moment. I think Supernova did a really good job with Prez back. I think we were a bit worried about how Prez would, uh, Prez would fit back in yep, after yep. Pinku's performance, but definitely holding his own. And uh, yeah, now it's time to see if him being back will allow some more attacking round wins. Who takes it from here? Um, I actually think Outlast, to be honest. I don't know if uh, Supernova have it in them. Okay. Well, honestly, we'll get more of your thoughts after this game concludes, of course, with you and Rob on the desk. Thanks for uh, coming in during that little tech pause. We'll Thank hear you. from you more, of course, throughout the stage. Enjoy it, boys. So 4-3 as we get back in for the eighth round. Thanks to Vinny for coming in for a chat. We need to do that more often, I think. Yeah, he really didn't sound like he wanted to be there, though, did he? He didn't, though. But it's fine. He hasn't really got a choice. No. Mine's production says, hey, get on the mic. Well, I said it. <laughs> yeah, but you said it, then production told him to do it, and then he had to do it. Yeah. So. It's a chain of command. No, good to get his inside. Always uh, love having X-Pros on the desk. So. Yep. Outlast on the defensive side now, looking to try and close this one out for what would be their second win of the stage, guys, through the opening two play days, beating Antic in play day one. Great result for them, and if they can take down Supernova... Dare I say, you know, kind of looking at the overall league, it really sets them up for that third place finish. I mean, I know that's going super early, putting them behind still Chiefs and, and Gaming Gladiators, but by knocking off Antic, knocking off Supernova, in terms of other direct competitors, there's not too many. That third place could very well be theirs if they continue to have a good stage and win the games they're supposed to win from here on out if they can close this out. So ends up being a pretty pivotal match between these two. For Supernova, it would also mean... A zero and two start, despite the strength of this roster. Quixi, opening kill. He has started to improve. After a bit of a, well, damning start, it's Quixi straight in towards the backside through Corn and actually in towards Kitchen already. They've just slipped straight in towards Sight. Oh. Bailey had no idea. Cops went in the shoulder, able to stay alive. What a shot into Ned! Quixi making swift entry. And with that, this is suddenly a very commanding round now for Supernova. Oh, that, He's won in the round. That's clean. Wow. Seemingly out of nowhere. Able to find that control, landing some really sharp shots. Now Relays and Yentai need to hold out for a minute and 20 seconds. Supernova picking up the pace this time around. They'll look to snowball now with Deimos in play and Relays will well and truly be put on an island over towards Cafeteria. Can try to push out through Con, but doesn't really have much to work off. Deimos is such a snowball -y operator, right? When you're winning, he can make winning even easier. Fall back. Oh, he couldn't oh, get back in time. Trade. I don't hate that necessarily when you're in a well, 2v4 situation. You're getting death mark track. They know where you are. You want to try and make something happen. Stuck over towards Kitchen at the moment now for Yentai. And they're all just running around. Does get the kill onto President. Makes it a 1v2. Makes this a little bit nerve-wracking. But Naru Bappen gets the headshot. Little tea bag, And suddenly Supernova. Fight back. It's 4-4. Yeah, great work there from Quixie and being able to crack open the round. We were, I think, rightfully critical of him a little bit earlier on in the match. He had a couple of moments that were certainly questionable and put his team on the back foot. But I watch uh, Quixie entry again. We didn't really... I mean, this is actually by that point already pretty deep into the round. He was just straight into sight. Yeah. I mean, he was eventually traded from up above, but damage already done. Bappen hits a really nice trade bot spiral there to make sure the round is confirmed with confidence. And yeah. So it was. Too much damage done. I mean, maybe that's side. the game plan for Supernova, right? Because we saw in the last round they go for a, a much slower, you know, admin across, very structured, made some big faults in the, in the shield clear. If they can look to just full lean into quick entries and lurks, etc., that might actually be the play for them. But I think in theory it's not supposed to work though, because if you haven't cleared up above, even if you get sight control, if you don't have the vert, it becomes very difficult. But when you go in and kill three players, well, you've done most of the work at that point, right? You don't have to worry too much about vert. And I do like the response, actually, from Outlast to put relays onto the Oryx, maybe to just try and get a bit of that map control, move around a little bit more freely. Top floor to bot floor, back and forth. Try and stall them out a little bit. Good information off the Valt cams as well for ACOG. And all said and done, though, the Nook here for Quixie could actually be a really strong counter if he wants to kind of keep that pace going. Yeah, he's been involved in a lot of entry battles. He's been involved in the last five in this matchup, one out three of them. Last five in a row? Yep. Wow. He's been on the receiving end of two. Funnily enough, both to ACOG. So it could be a 
potential duel between the two here in round nine. Wait and see. ACOG, uh, of course, on the Valkyrie for this particular round, but is second floor. Oryx could be a dangerous factor for the attack to deal with. Currently all the way in basement, and realize we'll have the ability to quickly rotate up hatches if required as well. Yeah, it goes both ways though as well. Relays does need to be careful of Supernova moving around the building, getting you know map control that he's not quite aware that they've already say acquired. But it's back to kind of this Visa repel game and the entry now from Palarazzi on the ramp. So it's almost like bringing it just back a little bit. Logic bomb rings out about as early as you possibly can there on the dock could be this time. Not ideal if he relays, by the way, but he's basement, so that wouldn't have been hurt. Quixie has no idea. So if he has contact towards yellow, expect for relays to make his way up, and that could be an opening kill for Outlasters. The push forward from ACOG is successful. Had intel on Polarazzi's position towards managers, and suddenly Quixie maybe has an idea that there is actually one pushing below. Call rings out. Relays, I think this time around, audibly would have been in range of Quixie. Oh, what a shot. Well, plays off the yellow ping. Tries to make his way oh, down no. yellow. Relays should have got that kill. The way that Quixie was kind of running down, Ned finds one onto Bappen, though, elsewhere. And Relays is doing enough, though, to keep Quixie at bay. Yeah, I think he just hesitated for a split moment. Proved costly. Now, needs to be mindful that he doesn't get caught. Oh, God. Wins that fight. Wow. And with it, probably the round. Yeah, that was a... Bit of a damning moment there. Relays ends up winning it out. The Oryx pick does look now very shrewd in its selection. Down to Dirty and President. White flash. Just momentarily keeping Ned blind. Dirty can't fight an ankle. No more logic bombs. The swing from President. The fragger in President. Big kill to take out Ned on the mirror. He's still got that Oryx roaming around. You've got ACOG over towards bot. In basement and garage as well. 25 seconds. Not a lot of time. Still need to drop below. Get the plant down. It's too much to clear. So little time. And they know that Relays is roaming around. Vulcan canister exploded. Delaying the ability to even just push in. And how about President who wanted to get into piano. Outlast. Retake the lead. Well worked round. Yeah, solid work there on the Rome game from Outlast. Um, ACOG able to push forward and find one on the top floor. Oryx continued to have perceived pressure as well throughout the round. Um, so really is doing a really good job at, you know, staying alive, albeit missing that trade, but it didn't really matter in the end. Good push forward initially there from Quixie, but didn't look to then take site control with that. Didn't have much of a read, and that's sort of understandable, and perhaps they were wary again of that Oryx flank potential. Either way, though, numbers whittled down. So did time. Flame stalling out the push. And Supernova now have a bit to ponder during this tactical timeout because this game has been far from smooth sailing for them. Well, it hasn't really been smooth sailing for either team. It's really just going to come down to who has the sheer will to kind of get their team over the line. Who can make the big moments count? You know, this is going to be the kind of game where it, it comes down to these little individual moments. 5-4 on the scoreline, not many rounds to really go in this unless we go to OT. You can have a bad game, but if you can have a good couple of rounds to the end here and really make something happen, then you could, you know, really help out. So if you've started a little bit slow, don't, you know, hang your head. To be fair, you kind of look at uh, across the board for Alas. Everyone has either been performing well enough. It's really dirty. He's the only one that stands out st statistically in terms of the KDA department, 3-8. So if you kind of look to him and you say, well, maybe Supernova's got a little bit more firepower that they could unlock. He's going to go on the Twitch. You can have a bad game, but can you have a good couple of rounds? That's all that's required of you right now, going into the 10th and beyond. At last, not too far away, though, from being able to find just their second win in two games. What would be a dream start to the stage? Pew, pew, pew. Oh, we're back. I'm reloading. So, striker in play then for Pelarazzi here, round 10. 
We'll see what kind of an impact that may have in the uh, utility department. Looks like he's running impact EMPs and probably some kind of throwable in combination with that. I'd love to be able to tell you, but I can't until we spectate. <laughs> And I make that assumption with Secretary Hardbeach is on the hands of the Capitalian president. Able to open up above. Elsewhere, Quixie joining admin side and with the line in place and crowd control available here for Supernova. Now, last time out, they found it very difficult to transition this control from admin across towards the objective. Getting admin itself was, you know, fine. But clearing the shield over towards vending proved to be a challenge. Now, Floor is in play this time around and the shield actually not standing. If there was one in play. It's floating box. Oh. I don't think there would have been, so... Bit of a different uh, setup here from Outlast. Maybe looking to play a little bit more towards the back line. Probably anticipated the counter pick or counter play here from Supernova. Has the Nook worked well? Do you think we've seen it a little bit from Supernova? Don't know if we've really ha seen it have such a large impact though. Remember the old days when you'd cook it and it exploded? Would have been a kill. <laughs> Would have been a kill. Instead of just gravity. Just drops back down. <laughs> Couldn't get it trapped in the floorboard. He's, he's gonna die too. Oh, maybe not. There's a good position for relays. Oh. You're dead. Whoa, oh, Bappen. He makes his... Oh, oh my God. Dude. <laughs> 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 his life flashed before his eyes. It did. It certainly did. As Outlast, you would think, have now secured themselves match point round up to 5v2 in the 10th. They're really struggling on this side, and we saw it even without Prez in the last play day again. Meeting proving Ooh, to be a challenge. Good shot, Dirty. Didn't have the vision, but he still gets the kill. Not going to be enough, though. 16 HP to hold the cross. Good luck. No flashes can't even support Prez if you wanted to. It's going to be like the last round where, again, these flames, once they spread out, so difficult to push through these doorways. Both doorways, in fact, are completely flamed out. It's going to be causing the... Secondary hard breach used here from Preston to maybe find another angle of attack. That's a good kill from Dirty. Brings it. Oh, hold two on. Or three. Now two v two. Now brings it to at least a one v two with twelve seconds left from President to try and follow up the work set by Dirty. There is one close left. He's going to have to get this kill quickly, but no relays swings a little bit better. A good little moment there from Dirty, but he had so much that needed to be done. So little time. Match point for Outlast. Yeah, I, I think for Supernova, it's back to the workshop um, specifically on that site for their attacks here on Consulate because that's now back-to-back -back play days even with the addition of Prez that they're really struggling on that site. Getting admin fine, but transitioning to site control has just been well, what a, a disaster. What a drop-off in some ways for Supernova where last week they pushed Game of Gladiators all the way to 15 rounds and this particular play day, same map, very different result. Oh, that was a, TK a team too. kill. That's not on that's not on Quixie by the way. Palarazzi doesn't need to swing that. We saw it actually beautifully from that POV. Like they the Palarazzi just literally just walked right into his into his uh shooting. So uh, I don't know. That's that's not Quixie's fault in my mind. Relays and ACOG though, both have been yeah, very good. Another performance for relays, played well last week in the win against Antic. I don't know if you have his stats from last week, but this would be a big win for Outlast and for Supernova back to the drawing board. Still two opportunities though for Supernova on the attack. And of course, I think it was last week actually Supernova got five of their rounds on the defense against Game of Gladiators, so. Just confirming that now, actually. Indeed, I was right. They only got two attacking round wins uh, for a, a game that went 15 rounds. So, of course, OT, etc. But it definitely feels like uh, attacking on console has been the struggle for Supernova. Relays numbers you wanted, right? Yeah. Uh, yeah, highest DPS, 130. There you go. Well, 13 and 9 last week against the old uh, Antic. Just backed it up here against Supernova in a pretty cutthroat game. One to keep an eye on as the stage continues. So the Glaz play now for Supernova to try and formulate a plan of attack. 
Last time out, they threw out all the smokes, but the Glaz wasn't really holding to watch those smokes. He was going for the plant. I don't think it worked out really well. I think it actually might have been either Supernova or Outlast who did that. I think it was actually Outlast in the first half. Oh, Bailey's going to get caught here, I think, by Quixie. Might be a little bit de dependent on timing. Ooh, definitely a bit of weariness here from Ned. What was the other one on the other side that Quixie was potentially ready to fire onto? It's not going to actually be basement for Bappen on the Glaz in through lobby. In fact, a, a yeah, different what? approach here from Supernova. Whether it works or not, we'll have to see. Bappen does find a kill. Reaching charge to open up the castle barricade, but Yentai catches out quickly, who had good position in basement. Yeah, this is a strange approach from Supernova. Flushing out this first floor position, ACOG drops the diffuser, Dirty and Prez, to try and hold on to the match. Yeah, I think we might be wrapping this one up. Dirty, though, he has been Ooh. starting to hit some really good shots in the previous round now in this one. Keeps it alive, two versus two. They are both low, they've still got the kit. Oh, from below. Ned catches him through the floorboards, and that's going to be dirty down. President really needed that helping hand. And for the second round in a row, finds himself in a one versus two with 35 seconds left. Mr. President, what have you got for us? Prez on cam was cleared. President back in for this play day. The match now on his shoulders. A lot of pressure to try and break down this defense. Two players left, 20 seconds on the clock. It's not a lot of time. At this point now, you can play time. If you're Outlast, you can just get him into a position where he has to try and stick the plant. There's another camera following you the whole way down. The flames in front of his very eyes. Please do not peek, Ned. Never, ever a need to. There's no time remaining. Game is done. GG's come out. 7-4 win. Outlast. Indeed, Outlast their opponents here on Consulate and find a second win from two play days. This team, I tell you what, guys, they're looking very good for this particular stage of the Oceania League. One to keep an eye on. Yeah, absolutely. I think they've garnered a lot of respect um, from this particular match and their performance. They're able to really tidy things up, I think, throughout that second half and overall played some really solid siege. Um, in contrast, though, probably back to the drawing board a little bit for Supernova on Consulate. Yeah.